We are live. I am with Matthew Street, who has an awesome kind of Beatles related channel, plus, you know, other things, power pop, cheap trick and whatever. And we just watched the uh, Beatles documentary, which was yes. kind of emotional for both of us. Yes. Yes. Not that funny, but at some point you have to mention that one part where we both were emotional at the same time. Yeah. That was very cool. Yeah, it, it was. <laughs> It was when they mentioned about George's passing. That's when yeah, it yeah. hit me. <laughs> right. That's not that's that, not that it didn't upset me about John, of course, but it's it's yeah. weird though. Exactly. But for some reason, when that little calendar was flipping away, yeah, and it got to two thousand one, it just hit me. Yeah, it hit me hard. <laughs> just saw the short documentary. It was brilliant. I can't. Can you see that, Matthew? I can. Yeah, kind of. Um, you know what? Let me get rid of these. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll get rid of the dark Matthew Street shades and go with a lighter one. What do you think? We'll go with a lighter. Oh, yeah, yeah that's a little better. Yeah, that's a little better. Okay. <laughs> you might have to help me, though. I'm still I'm still yeah, kind yeah, of... Um, and, uh, uh, Sam if you don't mind, Khan. thank you. <laughs> Brilliant documentary. Hearing John's voice gave me chills. Yeah. Like, Absolutely. Oh, Larry, can I just mention did. that? But John's voice, I, I couldn't believe how pristine it was yeah. on the and, demo. And, you know, we, can, we talk about this AI and all that. It's, it sounds natural, right? Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. When that voice from that demo came on, cleaned up, we only got a few seconds of it before. And when we did, yeah. I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. That sounds almost like almost studio quality, if not, yeah. you know? Yeah. Oh, I don't, I'll tell you. Um. Just sitting there. I, I really liked how they use the yellow submarine themes throughout this whole documentary. Like some of the, when they were talking about a certain issue, like uh, technology, they showed the contraptions from yellow submarine and the, in yeah. the submarine, all the little buttons and things. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, when they would go through years, starting back in the Beatle days up to now, the yeah. calendar flipped using kind of a yellow submarine theme. I thought that yeah. was pretty neat. Yeah. Quarry men. That George Harrison part got to me as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I guess it's because he was shown with with Paul and Ringo, right? And you're thinking, oh, there they are together. And then it's like a reminder. Yeah, he's not with us anymore. <laughs> and that and that's a great yeah great point because what I loved was they showed a, more of the 1995 footage that we've only been teased with a little bit in the real love video yeah. and on the bonus disc on the anthology. We were teased with some of that 95 footage or that footage from the mid nineties, but boy, in this one, in this documentary, I mean, we saw a lot more of that yeah. uh, images I had never seen. And then that leading up to his George, he's talking, he's in the studio working with them, as you said, and then all of a sudden 2001 is shown. Yeah. George left us. Yeah. And it's just, yeah. uh, that and was obviously fun. Peter Jackson, he must be working on that anthology or, or, or the three of them together, like there's something going on, right? That, that he has to be. I mean, yeah. I would think he is because of just this. Again, I'm not a technological person, but Mal, I guess they call it AI, but this Mal, I don't even know what it stands for. Whatever his team has come up with for separating these sounds, th yeah. this is technology. I just, I never thought I'd see in my lifetime that they're able to take a, a crappy little cassette tape yeah. from the late 70s. Yeah and pull that voice out the way they did that we heard briefly in yeah. this documentary. I, I'm just, th this man is, or his team and this man are geniuses. And yeah. I can only imagine what we will see going forward, Larry. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, you know, I know that back in the day, George wasn't so keen on this song, but I think it was, was because of the issues they had with John's voice and the piano, you know, the frustration, right? Oh, agreed. Absolutely. Yeah. The technology just wasn't there 28, 30 years ago. It, it just was not there. And they were not, I think they did the best they could with Free as a Bird and Real Love, although I think those tapes were a little easier for them to work with at the time. Yeah. But I think basically what they said in the documentary, this one just was a little tougher nut to crack. And they tried it and did what they could. And they finally just, they walked away from it all yeah. those years ago. 
and here we are. <laughs> I, I wonder if that bit of now and then they played near the end was part of the actual song. Yeah, it was. Or just an early good, mix. Good no, point. that's it. Either way, yeah, it good sounds point. great. I don't know, yeah. but it, it sounded darn good, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I, it's making me look forward to tomorrow even all the more. And I was looking forward to it with trepidation. I was looking forward to tomorrow yeah. and hearing it. And I want to be honest in my assessment of it, yes. as I'm sure you will be. But, but uh, you boy, know, you're right. no matter what, with the way the world is, there's going to be people bitching about it. <laughs> you know, like, it can never be right. <laughs> there's never a Beatles project since I was a little kid that came out and somebody it's didn't bitch and moan about it. <laughs> right. Cash. Well, you're going to hear cash grab. You're going to hear that a lot. You're going to hear it sucks. It stinks. Oh, it's no good. It's yeah, yeah. I, you're going to hear it. So just yeah. be ready, folks. But, uh, and it's a shame that people can't just, you know, lower their guard a little bit for a little while. Appreciate it. Even, the even, suppress your negativity not, and just go with it. Enjoy yeah, it. Even if it's not the greatest Beatles song, at least we have it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. At least we have one more Beatles song. Because I don't, I, I'd like to know your thoughts. I don't think I've ever heard them in person, but I think I know them. Um, I love Free as a Bird, and I even love Real Love a little more. Mm -hmm. I love those two songs. I think they're fantastic. Are they Abbey Road worthy? Perhaps not. I don't know. That's to be discussed. But I love them, and I'm looking forward to this one as being part of the Beatles catalog. Uh, rest in peace, John and George. I'm sure they'll be pleased about this. Yeah, I think they would be. Absolutely. Just saw Based the, on the little bit we heard, yes. Yeah. Just saw the documentary. It brought tears in my eyes. Can't wait to hear now and then. Yeah. 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 Uh, to echo what Paul said, how lucky we are to have these men in our lives. Yeah. L like I was saying to on my la last live chat, chat with Glenn Kellaway, Right. It's just amazing, like how four people from the same area, you know what I mean? Like, right. It's just like magic. What are the odds that yeah. they all come from that same part of the world and they find each other? They're of different age categories in a yeah. sense. I mean, they're close in age, but there's differences. And they, they manage to find each other and hook up through all the changes of members through the quarrymen and the yeah. Silver Beetles and uh, all the Moon Dogs, and then as they come together after Pete is is let go from the band, and Ringo comes in and look at the magic we've gotten from them for yeah. sixty years. It's just amazing. It sucks. It stinks. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> There's Bob oh. Beetles. I really like how it sounded. Like John had the echo effect he preferred on his voice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. John always like didn't never seem yeah. to like his voice on uh, natural. You know th that that's one thing about John. Like it, it used to kind of bug me. It's like, you know, when he would he would kind of put down his own work. It's yes. like I don't want to hear that, John, because you're wrong. <laughs> you right, know? right, exactly. Uh, no, I, I, I like I said, I hate. I got to go back to it. That little snippet of here when Paul said, "Oh yes," and Peter Jackson was able to blah 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 and clean it up and then it came in with just yeah. john's solo voice yeah. on now and then and i i was floored by it i yeah. i was like oh my goodness if it sounds that good on this little clip yeah what is this song gonna sound like tomorrow in its full glory i i i, I get the tissue box ready where's my yeah. tissue box i'm ready yeah. <laughs> i wonder i wonder how long the song is ah that's a good point yeah yeah, free and free as a bird's a little longer than real love. I think real love is three something, and free as a bird, I believe, is in the high fours, four something. I think this is going to be a a free as a bird length. I think it's going to be over four. Let's take odds on this. Yeah. Let's yeah. all throw out our numbers. How it was, <laughs> whoever gets closest to the actual time of the song gets a prize. Yeah, <laughs> I have think it's going to be a, a long one. Have you pre-ordered any of it, Larry? I know Matt has. Yes, I ordered it on uh, Amazon Canada. The, the CDs. Oh. Yeah. You got the, oh, you got the, the now and then CD. Yeah. yeah. I was very happy. I I couldn't believe there was a delay on offering that. And then uh, I heard through other people that there was going to be a CD and I was excited about it. And I did order one. Yes. Yeah. But I had to order it through the UK site because I didn't see it on the US site. Maybe it's there now. Yeah. Uh, Robert Saul, the technology can possibly free up some of their live performances. Yeah. 
Mm. Possibly. Oh, I don't know about you, Larry, but I'd love to see Peter Jackson work with the Star Club tapes and do something yeah. like this with that. Oh, yeah. my goodness, that would sound great. Yeah. I just pre-ordered the Red Album. On mm. Spotify, it says four minutes, eight seconds. Ah, okay. So yeah, it's, it's got a nice length to it. Not, not too long, but good. Excellent. It would be great to reduce the audience noise with AI in their live recordings. Yeah, I don't want to hear the audience. <laughs> mm, right. <laughs> well, it's me, uh, Mr. Mayo. Uh, hi, hey. guys. I'm in a Uber en route to the airport. Hey, Joe. How yeah, you doing? Hi, Joe. <laughs> the, yeah, he's, I, he's in case you haven't off. seen the documentary, it's it's no good. It's garbage. Yeah, yeah. It's a cash it's grab. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy lovely to see I, paul I, lovely to see paul doing the tribute to george with the sly guitar solo yeah yes yes i i just love those little nuances like that you're right i mean just to to throw a nod to george like that it just and it makes you feel good knowing that yes they had their ups and downs over the years all four of them did yeah, at different yeah. points but to see that here we are now today and that Paul and George were in a good place at the end, and then he can do this, pay a little tribute yeah. to his friend from the old days with and, that guitar and then, style. That's and then for great. us Beatles fans, the Get Back documentary, that really changed, I think, most Beatles' attitudes. You know, thinking, oh, near the end, it was like they were, you know, it was right. all depressing stuff. And then you watch the documentary. Yeah. Not that they didn't argue and whatever, but it was more, right, exactly. there was positive things, too. Right. It was it was it was a natural reflection of where yeah. most people and most friendships and relationships are at. We have our our good times together and you're gonna have the bad times, you know, the times you're at each other's throats, but um if you love each other, whether it's friends or family, you you find a way to to bring it around again and, and they yeah, you're right. That documentary proved that point. Yeah, yeah. Uh loved that bit when George said it opens up a whole kettle of fish and Paul said can of worms. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Wish uh, rain. I, yeah. Wish rain made the red album, but you know, there's, you're going to complain, right? They can't. We could all, I mean, songs. I'm sure you, you yeah. could throw out songs on the new edition that you would like to see off yeah. and ones you really love, you'd love to see on. And I'm yeah. sure I could come up with a different list. So yeah. Yeah. We can't please every Beatle fan yeah. out there. I'm just happy and I cherish anything I can get. You know? And if yeah. I choose not to buy it, I won't. And if I want it, I will. I wonder how complete a song it was, how many verses, a full course, etc. I think it's mm. a complete. They must have made it yeah. a complete song. I've only heard the raw demo and it sounded like there was enough there and we're fleshing it out. Yeah, you could certainly get it to the four minute time mark, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh how do you George Harrison's son Dan Danny? Yeah. Danny heard now and then and wept. It's going to be good. Yeah. 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 That's what a lot of people are saying. People that have heard uh, you know, people, my viewers and that that have come on to me and said, Matt, I read a review of it here or there, or someone heard it, or Rolling Stone said this or that. And it sounds like every, the reviews thus far have been all positive for this song, that people are going to love it. Yeah. Uh, Rain is a good song, but if you play the song backwards at the end of the video. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the doc. Oh, this is me and Mr. Mayo. I watched the documentary oh, sorry. in the Uber. Very exciting. This song may be good. Amazing how they isolated John's voice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Joe, that's what we were saying earlier. I, I was floored by the sound of John's voice. It was like he was in the room with you, just in that little clip in the documentary. Uh, documentary was just on BBC One in UK on an extended version of magazine show called The One Show. They had Giles Martin on it and other touching segments. Hmm. Hmm. That's great. They it sounds like they fleshed it out a little bit over there. Hmm. I'll be watching it several times after we're done, Larry. I can yeah, tell you that. Yeah, and we'll be go yeah. going back and yeah. looking at every little nuance and every little yeah. thing I can find. It, it was even amazing when they're when it, they show that screen. It's like this long, amazing screen, like the footage, like the video. Footage. Oh yeah, that exactly. was incredible. Yeah. Like yeah, you, 
so many, I, I like I said, just seeing it once and you think of all these little things that just yeah. jumped out at you and I just but, can't wait to really uh, but, write but notes and everything. Peter Jackson and whoever else worked with him, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. You thank know. you to Peter and his team. Yeah. Uh, you know, not not that it's just him. I'm sure he has a pretty big group of people working. But did yeah. did you catch any part where it said about how much involvement from George we're getting? I know I know what it said. George is on guitars plural. Does yeah. that is he have more than one guitar track or just rhythm? Know. Or I'd really love to know. I want to really see what George's involvement is at the end of the yeah. day, and I hope he's featured in some way on it. Yeah, you know. Imagine being part of that orchestra and finding out later what's yeah yeah you just oh played on a Beatles song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just played on one of the, the, the what could be the final Beatles song ever. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, Wes Wenner Strong. Oh Wes, yeah hi Wes. After watching this documentary, the excitement has hit me. Yeah, like when I heard about this Red and Blue album and the new song, I didn't. You know, right. I, I honestly didn't wasn't that excited but when they started the countdown to, mm -hmm. to, to everything it's like you know i'm gonna do a lot yeah. you know i get all excited <laughs> yeah no it, i i i've been beside myself this past week or so just like every day i think i'm not gonna make a video or get involved and then you hear another little tidbit and you just have to you've got to talk to someone you know i i don't have a lot of like direct beetle maniacs right near me in my life here so yeah. i have to come here i have to come to people like you and others that i'm friendly with on youtube to kind of let it all out and get the emotions out because uh it, it, you can't pen you can't keep it all in you got to get it out uh janet sampson bob what time tomorrow will we hear does it come out i heard it's 10 a.m eastern standard time Yes, yeah. my memory. On, it, it'll be on uh, the Beatles website. Whatever time right, it is. right. Yeah, I thought it was 10 a.m. my time here at Eastern Seaboard, but uh, yeah. I could be off. When do you think we will get Rubber Soul? I'm thinking, I think they might already have all, all of the songs done. Uh, I would agree with you. Because isn't half of Rubber Soul on the Red Album? Or most of it, a uh, good chunk of it's already it's, on the yeah, Red Album. Of, so but I, I'm I thinking would, may, maybe it, it would... I think it would be easier to remix the older stuff. Right, right, right. Less tracks to deal yeah. with and separate yeah. and all that. But yeah, like the Rubber Soul, all the stuff on the Red Album is 2023 20, mixes. So they've got almost half of it done already. I can't see why they can't finish that up, get some outtakes and some live material from that era and put out a great yeah. deluxe package maybe next year. Yeah. I, it, I it'll be know. so nice to hear the, the earlier material in stereo with mm. the proper panning of everything. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, I'm looking forward to both the red and blue coming next week, but the red one especially. I'm so stoked to hear that. I know it's true. Now then, acoustic and electric. Acoustic and electric guitars. Paul also implies in the documentary, he added some guitar, yeah, in George's style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rob Skier, music. Hello, Robert. Robert, Robert S. Hi, Robert. Oh. Um, if anybody that's a Beatles fan, I'll put the link in the. If anybody else wants to join here, there it is. You have to be a Beatles fan. Calm down. Yeah, you have to be. You can't. <laughs> and you cannot use the term cash grab, or you will be sacked. <laughs> You'll be terminated. Uh, Robert Saul, in the documentary, there is a brief moment where Paul joins John on the vocals. They always sounded sounded so together, yeah. Mm. That's the ultimate for me, for vocals, yeah. when John and Paul sang together. You nailed it. Yep, exactly. That I, I really hope we hear a little more of that in the final product. Do you guys think this will be the last Beatles track? Because I don't think so. I think it is. I, 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 I can't imagine what else they could do or where you can get George's involvement. Thank goodness that in 1995 that George was involved on some level, uh, even though they put the track aside. And now here we are all these years later, they're able to finish it as a foursome. Um, I don't 
unless somebody knows of something different, I can't think of anything else George would be directly involved with. Yeah. Um, I'm very excited for the remixes for Revolution, Hey Bulldog, I Am the Walrus, yeah, and even Old Brown Shoe. I love Old Brown Shoe. Yeah, yeah, they're 2023 mixes. Um, I, I was really so surprised I wonder to with, see that. With I Am the Walrus, you know how it goes from stereo to mono at, in the second half. I wonder what right. they're going to do there. Oh, boy. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Yeah. Huh. Uh, it will be... I don't know, I, I, I'm sure it'll sound glorious. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be the last because George can't play anymore. That's right. 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 It's the I mean, prod I'm corner. Sure. I love the Beatles. We, we, most of us do. <laughs> you had a couple of naysayers out there, but I think I think yeah. they're just trying to be uh Yeah, I, I love it when I do, sex. I'm I'm sure it happens with you too. You, you do a Beatles video and then Somebody that doesn't like the Beatles has to leave a comment. It's like, go watch something yeah. else. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or I'll get things like, enough already. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, or, or they're, they're just a boy band. That, yeah, that's that's the whole majority purpose of my channel is I'm a Beatles-centric channel. Why wouldn't I talk about the Beatles in glowing terms? I mean, that's that's what I do, and, yeah. and that's what you do, and that's what many others do. And if people don't like it, go... There's other channels that don't talk about the Beatles, you know? Yeah. Uh, Rob Skier Music, are there any songs you feel are missing from the upcoming Red and Blue album? I just, uh, the, yeah. the one I noticed missing was Helter Skelter. I would have liked to have seen it on the on on it, but. I, I lean towards Don't Bother Me from George, yeah. only because yeah. he wrote that one. It's one of the best songs on Meet the Beatles or with the Beatles or Beatlemania in Canada. Um, I love, he wrote it, he sang on it, his first lead vocal, a uh, lead vocal that he wrote the song. I would have loved to see it. But I, I got to say, I love George's version of Roll Over Beethoven. So I'm happy to see that on there. Yeah. Yeah. It's just not that I don't love Glass Onion, but you think they would have chosen Helter Skelter over Glass Onion. Right. And I was watching another channel. I think it was uh, Matt Williamson. Are you familiar with Matt Williamson? Yep. Uh, yep. Pop Go the 60s, a great guy. Um, he mentioned birthday might have been a better choice than Glass Onion because just it's such a, even though it wasn't a single per se, it's such a commonly known song. Even to yeah. this day, you go to any birthday party at a cookout in the summer and what song comes on from the DJ? Birthday. So that, it's kind of a, a known song. So. Oh, um, it's bizarre to think with how much time they spend in the studio, especially from 64 onwards, there are hardly any unreleased Beatles songs apart from the avant-garde music piece. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, you wonder what's in the vaults. That's why I'm looking forward to I'm hoping, like you said, they do the early deluxe packages with Please Please Me up to Rubber Soul, because I would love to see what if there's any nuggets in there that we haven't heard yet, you know, or different takes or whatever. That would yeah. be fantastic. Yeah. What about an anthology four possibility? I, I think mm -hmm. just re-release the 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 first three with hopefully you know expand on it maybe. Yeah, I'd like to see the first three, as you said, expanded, and I would love to see now and then finally get on volume three. Like, yeah. you know, we had Free as a Bird on volume one, Real Love, and I know it's going to be on the, the red and blue coming up next week, but you know, it would be a nice little bone they could throw us if they complete the package, so to speak, with the anthology and put now and then on volume three. Hmm. I heard they bungled I Am the Walrus remix. Uh-oh. <laughs> Who'd you hear that from? <laughs> Separate all the elements and make it full stereo. Yeah, that's what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait. I really love it when Paul sings with John on the ballad of John and you. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And you, you can tell, you know, and, and when that forty-five came out, I thought it was. All four Beatles, right? I didn't know for a Absolutely. few years it was just John and yeah. Paul. Yeah. No, it took me a long time to figure that out. I was very young when that track came out, and I liked it. I loved that, the beat it had, the groove it had. Yeah. But um, 
I yeah, I just thought it was the Beatles. You know, yeah. everything that was recorded when I was a kid was oh, it's the Beatles. You know, yeah. it's, it's all four of them doing whatever. Yeah. I even thought they used to play the trumpet parts and all that when I was yeah. a kid. Like when you'd hear trumpet and Penny Lane or strings, I thought, oh, they're so talented. They yeah. could do, do all that I, stuff. I, I, re I remember, you know, I'd buy all the Beatles 45s. And when uh, you know my name, you know my name, look up the number. You know, the first time I played it, it's like, right. what the? F is this, right? <laughs> yeah. But I love it now, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, but it's so quirky. Yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I was when I was a kid, I couldn't stand it. I was like, what yeah. is this garbage? You know, but no, now it's it's very uh yeah, yeah it kinda it's it's very whimsical and, yeah. and fun. Yeah. yeah. I wish the red and blue would be more chrono chronologically integrated. Yeah, for the vinyl. On the vinyl. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. But if you're looking for integration, go with the CDs and you'll be hopefully happy with that. Was I the only one to cry when the isolated John voice appeared? No, I I think we are both getting emotional mm -hmm. a yeah. few times in I, the video. Yeah, I started getting misty. It first hit me when 2001 rolled on, like we were talking yeah. earlier when they. And, and I'm a really leaving macho them. guy. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Walk tall and carry a big stick, I say. Yeah. Uh, I prefer I need you over don't bother me. Hmm. I love that. that. Would have been, I would have loved to see I need you on there too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I love Within You, Without You, but it's an odd choice for this collection. It's not a song that appeals to a lot of people. Mm. Hmm, I love it, but... I guess... If you want, I love that song myself, but I guess if you want to push that one aside, then give me It's All Too Much. Yeah. Don't get, keep another George lead on there and put it It's All Too Much on the album if you're going to take out Within You but, Without You. But the Beatles doing the Indian music, that was a big, big thing in the 60s. Like it influenced. Mm -hmm. I, so Absolutely. I think it des deserves yeah. to be on. I, I love those. I love the Indian tracks now. Yeah. Like I said, go go back to you know my name. Look up the number. I was never a huge fan of that one when I was a kid. Yeah. The same with the Indian music. I was kind of like uh, you know I'd I'd skip some of those like the Inner Light and and such. I wouldn't listen too often. But now I really have an appreciation for that style. You know? Yeah. I think there's a couple of unreleased songs from the Get Back sessions. Oh wow! Wow. Well, the as long as you can have all four on a recording, then I'm all for it. Bring it yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. The inclusion of Helter Skelter would have been a chance to correct the version from the White Album remix. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> there are, you know, Giles Martin overall, I think he did a great job, but there are. Do, yeah, songs. there's a lot of people that complain about his mixes, yeah. and I have to say, I'm no audiophile, Larry. I'm yeah. far from yeah. it. I just like what I like. And yeah. I've been happy with the deluxe packages yeah. thus far. I'm very pleased with them. And you can always go back to the original mix. If, if you're not happy with, let's say, the Abbey Road 2019 mix, go back to your original stereo album. I mean, it's there if you want it. Yeah. Uh, Michael Tube HD, can you let me in, please? I would, but there's no video showing up for you. Like, I can't see you, so. And I went to click on. Oh, okay, now I see you. All right. There Hello. you are. Maccabees. Hello. Now, are you a Beatles fan? I need I some am. proof. <laughs> I am. Okay. Beatles fans allow, only allowed. Yeah. <laughs> ah, that's, oh, that's nice. Very nice. So what did I, you think? Of, what did you I mean, think of the documentary? Uh, I've just watched it and I think it's brilliant. Like, to listen to Paul and John playing together, I think it's amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And what did any uh, certain part of the documentary hit you emotionally that really, like, tugged at your heartstrings and you were like, oh, my goodness, that just... It's when John first, like, he, he comes back to life, like, his voice starts to come back mm -hmm. to life. And, you know... I've been listening to the Beatles since I was three years old. Like I, I, I've been with the Beatles since I was born, really. And right. Right. my favorite Beatle, if you're gonna ask who who my favorite Beatle is, it's Paul for me. Paul is just 
my hero. I, I would love to meet him. Same with John. If if he was still around here in 2023, I would love love to meet him as well. But, oh my goodness, yeah. You know, because yeah. I'm I I live near where the Beatles were made. I live in the other place in the northern area. Mm -hmm. um, and to be to be a Beatles fan is just amazing. I mean, loads of people who watch now are going to think the same as me, but to listen to a song that is that has been unreleased is just like you think, wow! Like how talented and, and, the people they are. And, and please forgive me, I I don't know your age, and that's your you know personal information. But you seem like a younger gentlemen and I, I am i'm uh 25 yes, years yeah, old. yeah you larry what are you talking about you're, you're you're a younger guy and it just um <laughs> it makes me feel good that younger people yeah yeah that, that this band can have such an emotional impact on your yeah. life as much as it has on an old fogey like me you know? I'm, I'm 15 years old oh. so yeah um, I love it. I have a grandson who's eight who's starting to listen to some Beatles now and enjoy it. It just makes me feel good to know that. I mean, you know, when young I'm people. really excited to just listen to the Beatles, their brand new song, uh, on the 3rd of November, it's getting released on YouTube on Premiere. Um, and when when I when I hit when we heard a premiere on it on the documentary. I thought, mm -hmm. my dad said to me, this is going to go to the charts. This is going to go to number one straight away. I hope streamed. so. I hope so. It's going to yeah. go. What do you think, everyone? Comment down below. Like, it will go on like, like that. It I'm also straight. very pleased that you get to experience this because, you know, guys like Larry and I, we've experienced a lot of Beatle, Beatle milestones from when they were together and in yeah. the years ensuing, especially the anthology or Paul touring or Ringo mm -hmm. touring in 89. But here you are, a younger guy, and you're getting to experience a special Beatles moment in your life. And it could yeah. be one of the final top shelf Beatle moments that we I all experience. So I'm glad you're getting people of I'm your age are getting it. That, yes. that because Maka is doing a tour in Australia at the moment. I'm hoping, I'm really hoping he does one in the UK because I hope he does for you too. Yeah. Yeah. Because my dream is to meet Maka. I, I really, really want to meet him. I, I, I'm going to like write a big sign <laughs> if I do, if, if, if he does tour, I'm gonna try and hold it up as high as I can, and I'm hoping he's <laughs> yeah. he might see it and say, "Let me on stage." I want That's to. That's right. Come up with a big sign and a cool phrase, something unique, and maybe he'll yeah. spot it. <laughs> yeah, you know, if I turn my camera off now, I will sound like John Lennon like that. Wow. Ready? Okay. Hang on. <clears throat> Wait. I know it's true. Um, imagine all the people. I don't know the other bit, but well, you definitely, you definitely have that that quality John had. He kind of nasally. No, I'm no singer, but what is it like? Uh, they. Like some people sing from here, they say some people sing from the throat, from the nasal ear. You definitely have that John Lennon vibe. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. I, I think the early tracks and demos on Anthology One, including You'll Be Mine, In Spite of All the Danger, and the Silver Beatles Deca audition track should be remixed with Peter Jackson's technology. Yeah, Absolutely. I agree. Oh, I'm all for that. Sure. Bring it on. Uh, three bands changed me to the core. This is the prog corner. Yes, mm -hmm. I've heard of them. Genesis and the Beatles. Yeah, I like. I love Yes. I'm not as much knowledgeable yeah. on Genesis, but I do love Yes. Yeah, I love Yes too. I've got a feeling should be on sixty seven. Oh yes. Yeah, well, especially because it's such a known song now and Paul playing it so much. Everybody's got a song. I hope all the Beatles' love will filter to younger generations to artists like Hendrix and the Doors. Mm. I mean, I'm a massive music fan. Like, I know 
I, I can see you've got the sparks on. I love the sparks as well. This town isn't big for the both in us. <laughs> um, number one in heaven, uh, beat the clock, you know. I, I think the Beatles always do that. They, they you start out loving them, and then they bring you to other artists of yeah. that ilk. I I think I I'm, I'm wide open to a lot of different bands because of the Beatles, right? Because of everything the, the Beatles uh, did. Ron dance. Yeah, right. You're doing the Ron Mail shuffle. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we know Larry loves Sparks. Uh, just wished the red and blue vinyl was the same format as the CDs, all mixed in correctly. I, I know. that's mm -hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, the CDs are in chronological order and the vinyl is not. Yeah. But, but yeah, the, like I was saying, the Beatles, you, you love them. I love They were my first love in music and they brought me to so many other artists and, and right up through to today, I always search for artists, even today, new artists that have that style, but you always go back home again and the Beatles were always that foundation, that home for me. I did this. That's very, very good. Oh, you made, you created that. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Very, yeah. very nice. And, and that shows them a good do, do you rem you remember it's hard to explain to, to younger people though how special it was when a new Beatles album was coming out? Mm. Right? It must yeah. have been really exciting. Like, it's not like any other band, right? Like not that mm -hmm. I love a lot of different bands, but mm -hmm. it's not the same thing. Exactly. I mean, and that's why I'm glad you're getting to experience this with this release because younger people, you know, I don't know, what would you say? I mean, I'm old, but uh, people 40 and younger haven't really ex had the chance to experience something like this, a new Beatles release, whether it be a yeah. single or an album. So I'm happy for all the people, the younger people, especially the teenagers that get to experience this. Mm. Mm. I've, I mean, I've got a friend who lives in Australia called Freddie and um, he went to see Macca on tour and I and I, and I, I was like I'm, I was really jealous and I'm I was I was like no but I have been to where it all started though in the cavern in 1961 I think it was in the cavern yeah. 1960, 1960. Hey, Rachel. Rachel it's Rachel's ghost hey kids Beatles. did you see Hi. the documentary Rachel I know I just finished watching it yeah what? Were, were you thoughts, crying? Thoughts? Yeah, it's pretty. Uh, yeah, I mean, us Beatle people, we love we love them, and so there's that love for the Beatles. So you come in, you hear John right when they first do, and it's loud, right? They crank it. I'll get choked mm -hmm. up if I if I keep going here, but uh, yeah, it's great. I love those guys, and uh, they mean a lot to me. And uh, it's like to everybody that's watching this thing right now, Larry. And, uh, you know, I've got, I've been, this year, I've been busy collecting my first uh, Pressings UK uh, Beatles pressing. I've got guitars on my wall because of the Beatles. I got, I was just sitting in a chair. I uh, kind actually, of have the flipping. 70s oh, sorry, go ahead. Paul McCartney. I'm <laughs> sorry. I love this kid's accent. <laughs> <laughs> Are you Rachel, were you, were you impressed with the quality of John's voice on the yeah. demo, what they did with it? Yeah, yeah, they cleaned it. I mean, the technology is outstanding. So, where's the young Absolutely. one from? Where is, is he from? Liverpool? No. Where are you from? Manchester. Oh, Manchester. So sorry. I know Oasis, where... the Gallagher I... brothers. Oh my yeah. God. Well, also, be... yeah, I got Oasis up on the wall right over there. Liam and uh, Noel are there. I, I I love Oasis. And mm -hmm. the Fab Four right over there. We, of course, our good friend Rob Walker from Manchester. Anyway, yeah, um, man, guys. Uh, I wish really he did happy. a tour. I wish Maka would just do a tour. I'll see what I can do for you. I'll, I'll have a talk with them. <laughs> what, what did you think, Matt? I was blown away. Like I was telling Larry, at first I was just, the first opening montage was awesome, how it showed all the different facets of the Beatles' career. And then it, it wasn't, though, I mean, I was, I was entranced by it, but I didn't get emotional. I was talking about this with Larry, and he felt the same way. When when they were running the calendar through the years, yeah, as they went through the documentary, and then it stopped on 2001, showed an image of George, and then you hear, I think it was Paul said, and then we lost George. Yeah. After all those clips of them working on in, 
you know, in 95, mid 90s. And then we lost George. I just, I, I just about lost it then. I mean, I could, I was getting misty eyed. I just, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you with George, it was like, uh, I didn't cry when he died, but about two weeks after he passed, I, I was, you know, I was actually, well, I don't want to say, but I, uh, but anyway, and that's where I lost it about two weeks delayed. John Lennon, I cried all day the day it happened. Back in a sec. Right, right. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah John's, John's a murder, uh, obviously, was... Uh, well, yeah, yeah, John, I mean, hearing his voice, especially the cleaned up version from now yeah. and then, I, I yeah. just hit me, yeah. It, I, it just makes you crave more, like that 12 minutes wasn't enough. I want to see more from 1995. I want to hear more of John. I want to see more of the... Uh, it's just a stunning little mini doc. That's for yeah, sure. it, was, it was really well done. And it really covers the main points that we have uh, Jeff Lynn in there. And then we get Peter Jackson with the technology. I keep all my Beatles CD because, you know, I do my live stream, Larry. So I keep all my Beatles stuff right here. But this thing was uh, an amazing achievement in itself. Yeah. Oh, and I, I had a lot of I had a lot of fear when it first uh, came out. I had a lot of like, are they going to try and. Uh, you know, change the history as we know it through the original uh, Get Back. And no, they didn't. It gave us exactly. more clarity and, and they fleshed it out. And they, they said, look, George Harrison quits during the session. So they didn't. And I was really pleased about that. And uh, But the overall effect was fantastic. Uh, Prague Corner, Scotty, we love Scott. But yeah, Larry. Yeah, they, they, everyone thought it was going to that doc, uh, get back was going to be a whitewash, and I don't think it yeah. was at all. I think it was more pure and natural, and showed all aspects of their relationship. Yeah, Matt, I'm not a big fan of these uh, things that float off. You yeah, know, they, so they be, they're kind of a pain. They yeah. it make it all those, yeah. Or, you know, because yeah. I don't want to get rid yeah. of it. Norman Maslow says oh, I just throw mine up, but. <laughs> <anyway>. <laughs> But I can't. You know, some some collectors would 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 shriek in horror if they knew you were going to just throw that away. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. But we're fortunate to live in, in this uh, day and age. Now, Larry, do you think yeah. it's going to be the last Beatles record uh, yeah. that they ever do? Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. Um, Matthew Street, we miss you as the co-host of Fab Gab, Richard. Yeah. Jane. I know. Unfortunately, I I, I appreciate it. I. I have a life and I'm happy with my life, but I have a 93 year old dad who I'm the primary caregiver for. I have grandkids I help with and um, my wife and I obviously are busy with things and stuff. So I wish I could do a more, not to get off track folks, just to explain, I wish I could do more of a permanent regular type thing where I'm here more in a live setting, but unfortunately my schedule doesn't permit it right now. But I'm so happy for people like Rachel and Larry who occasionally invite me in to do something. So thank yeah, we you. love you, uh, Matt. You got a great channel. You're a longtime Beatles person, and you're one of the lucky few of us that have actually had an occasion to meet one of the Fab Four. So uh, yeah, two actually, yeah. and a close encounter with the third. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> close encounter with George, but never met him. Yeah, yeah. Just, so, just real quick, his son Danny went to Brown University, right? three miles from me in Providence, Rhode Island here. And it was in the late nineties. Danny was there getting his degree. And I was, there was a bunch of record stores just off the Brown campus. And one day I was down there and the scuttlebutt came into the record store that George is on campus. He's here for some event for Danny. And I walked around that campus for, it had to be two hours, hoping I would bump into Mr. Harrison. And I never did. Oh, so. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and after this live show, I'll make sure I have a link for both channels. So please check out Matthew Street and Rachel's Ghost. She does a live show every day. Yeah. 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 And we love the, all three of us love the Beatles. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's mandatory Larry, around here. Well, Larry, like <laughs> Larry said, I think it was on my show, uh, repeating what he's often said. Is that there's the Beatles and then there's everybody else, and that's kind of how. Yeah, I, I like that phrase. I like I that phrase. Yeah. That way too. Yeah. Perfect, perfect phrase. Yeah, I agree with Rachel. That paper attachment on Get Back is annoying. I kept mine. Yeah, yeah I, I got to keep it, Rob. But uh, unfortunately, but yeah, you if know, you're a true gonna, collector, you got to stuff it somewhere. You got to keep the darn thing. And uh, but uh, I was afraid of taping it on in case I tear the box. So now it just kind of. 
you know, every time I show this, yeah. I have to go through it and deal with it. Yeah. David Fish. Yeah, like a sandwich bag. A sandwich bag didn't fit right over, and then it would hold everything together. So, what about Carnival of Light? I I think it's probably mm. not that good. Like I think Paul Paul has even said, and if they ever did release it, you're, you're just going to get complaints about it. It's not very good. <laughs> yeah, it's been built up a lot. I know very yeah. little about it, but I hear a lot of scuttlebutt that it's not that great. I think there's stuff. I think when Paul, you know, God forbid, but you know, time marches on. When Paul and Ringo are gone, yeah, they'll probably be the whoever's running the estates of thing. There will be another Beatles thing. I think it's really hard to say. But during the lifetime of Paul and Ringo, I think we're, that we're looking at it right now. Right. I think you nailed it, Rachel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think there will will always be a cash cow for the Beatles. Absolutely. <laughs> There's that term again. That damn where's my stick? That damn cash cow term. The Beatles are the best. That's right, Rob Skier music. There's the Beatles. Yeah. And then there's everybody else. Everyone else. Right. Yeah. So I did not buy the single. I've I've never been much of a singles person no. uh, to begin with, even back in the day, 1970 sort of thing. You know, it wasn't happening. But uh for LPs, yes. So I've ordered the red and blue. I went through You Discover, and the unfortunate thing in this crazy internet world of us Beatle channels and people who love the Fab Four is uh, what's happened is uh, mine is going to get here, but probably two weeks after everybody's got theirs from the brick and mortar and whoever. Oh, yeah. you know, so We're in the same boat. I always get my stuff late. Yep, yeah, I'm with I'm, you. So I may <laughs> not even do it. I've got all my Beatle box sets up here. Let it be. Isher demos, uh, White Album, Abbey Road, Revolver, Sergeant yeah. Pepper. Is the song being streamed tomorrow? Because I was hoping to make a video tomorrow night just with my th initial thoughts on Now and Then in general. Yeah. Is it streaming? 40 hours from now. So it's going to be uh, in two oh, days okay. on the 3rd of November. They're going to uh, uh, stream it. Oh, okay. So... So how are people supposed to hear it tomorrow if it's released tomorrow? Where do you uh, think they'll get it? Yeah, the album's tomorrow. Well, you know what's going to happen. People are going to start getting it out. It's going to leak here, there, and everywhere. Pardon the pun. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. But the official on, uh, what is it, Vivo, that, that you know does the official releases on yeah. these things, uh, they're doing it in two days' time. So it'll be out, and then they're going to have the official Vivo video for it. <laughs> But uh, prior to that, I'm sure people are going to have it and w snippets are going to be heard, you know, in various, yeah, I mean, uh, various worldwide ways. tomorrow. I'm saying worldwide. I want to hear it. I yeah. want to. Yeah, you get a good sense of what it was, you know, from the from the documentary. So Absolutely. that's kind of pleasant. Paul laying down the bass track for it. And uh, I guess it's not George on slide, but it's Paul impersonating George's slide style in order to make it more beatly. And I guess George's acoustic is going to be heard on there. Okay. So George is on acoustic. Okay. From what I, from what I'm understanding, what I got. I, I, yeah. I knew he had a, at least one guitar track, but I was wondering if maybe they can get a little more George on there, but Hey, I'll take what I can get from George. You know, is, uh, who's your favorite fab, uh, Matt? It's funny when you get as old as I am, you go through your life having different favorites right now. I would say my favorite Beatle, including Beatles, Solo, and everything, is Paul McCartney. I mean, oh, he's just yeah. the most prolific. He's still with us. He's producing. He's a workaholic. I love Paul and always will. So he's my favorite Beatle overall, the spectrum of when they came into the world and today. My favorite Beatle when they were still the Beatles would be John Lennon. Yeah. Yeah. Same with me. Yeah. Yeah. John, and, I don't change with mine. So it was John Lennon because of his personality, the kind of kind of typhoon he is, or, you know, he's like this hurricane in human form and mm -hmm. he's explosive. He's flawed. And, uh, but I like him. I love him. So John's, I still stand by John, even though Harry uh, from Harry's music room, another great channel. Love it. Another guy loves the Beatles, got tons of Beatles bootlegs. This guy, huge Beatles bootleg collection. And he go. He's just read uh, Cynthia Lennon's book, so he's all scarred from it. He's like, oh, oh yeah, man. you know, John. Yeah, don't man. don't read the Goldman book either. Oh, yeah, geez. that Goldman isn't that the worst? Yeah. Uh, yeah I went through a brief phase late in high school in the late seventies when I um, 
Uh, it was a, like a breakup with a girl or some silly thing. And George's George Harrison album from 1979 helped pull me through that dark period. <laughs> so I went through a phase for a brief period where George was my favorite because, yeah. wow, he's speaking to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I don't hear voices, folks. Yeah. I, I'm not that crazy. Without the Beatles, the music industry would be so much different. Well, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, my it goodness. Is. The, yeah. World, the world would be so much different. Yeah. My life would be so much different. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, the technology is, uh, is astounding. How do you uh, guys rate the song itself? It, uh, it, you can't really rate it until you hear, you hear the full thing. But it sounds yeah. good. It sounds promising, right? The, I'm a big fan of Real Love, and the original demo of Real Love is okay. It, you know, I, I enjoy it, but I much prefer the version George, Paul, and Ringo worked on in the mid-90s of Real Love. I love that song. It's one of my favorite Beatle tracks, believe it or not. And uh, so it's Hollywood now and then because the demo, same thing. It's like, oh, it's a cute little melody, but I really think when I hear the full production, it's going to knock me out. Yeah, interesting, the dynamic, the chemistry, uh, the role of uh, Jeff Lynn, ELO fame. So Lynn's kind of George's guy, right? We know, if we know anything from uh, Traveling Wilburys. And so I think Jeff, uh, George probably said, you know, I'm willing to do it, but maybe we'll bring Jeff in to help us. Uh, I know George Martin was not thrilled with the whole day. He found it kind of morbid, the fact that John had passed on uh, mm -hmm. sort of thing. And it's kind of crazy because when George Martin, I'll always remember when George Martin passed, because I was visiting England. It was my, you know, my bucket. Oh, no kidding. Trip oh, to wow. the UK. So I'm in yeah. England in March of 2016 when George Martin passed away. So I'll always remember, if not the date, the month and the year. And, right, and exactly. it was when that, when I heard about the Martin passing. So I think the reason Jeff Lynn's not part of it, if he's not to be part of it, is I think owed to the fact that this is not a George George is not there to uh, partake in the flesh, so to speak, with him. Yeah. It was nice. He's, I think he's getting a, a credit because of the work I think he did in the 90s. So when I was looking at the credits of this new song, it said uh, yeah. uh, associate something Jeff Lynn. That was a nice little mention anyway. You know. Yeah. Well, and of course, I love Lynn anyway. I mean, ELO's yeah. fantastic. Oh, yeah. oh, I love ELO. Absolutely. Yeah. Have you ever seen him, Matt? Did, were you ever able to see him in concert? Yeah, Yellow was one of those bands that, that was the biggest spread between when I saw them the first time and the last time. I saw them in 78 on the Out of the Blue tour. And then uh, 40 years later in 2018 at Madison Square Garden when Jeff Lynn's Yellow came in, I saw yeah. him. That, yeah, that's cool. He was phenomenal both times. Yeah, what do I got? Oh, yeah, here's what I want to show you. This is a weird thing. I've got this Yellow. This is uh, live at Wembley out of the blue tour. So oh, wow. and all that discovery. What's funny about this is Tony Curtis, the actor, he's got an ascot, blue, baby blue, powder blue ascot. And he comes out and inter introduces the yellow. Whether he knew who they were or not, I don't know. <laughs> That's a weird kind of thing. But Tony yeah. Curtis appears on this uh, ELO DVD. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> I just uh, love them. Real yeah. Love is my favorite Beatles song. Wow. Ah, I won't say it's my favorite, but I really appreciate Real Love. Nothing against Free as a Bird. I like that one too, but Real Love, every time I can hear that, I will listen. Love it. Yeah, that lady uh, walking back there, that's Sue, who I have the great fortune to be married to. And uh, when we got married, Sue walked down the aisle too. Real love and I will. So we got Paul, nice. I will, and then we got John song, real love. And so we opened very nice. Well, and then uh, we finished off with real love. I, I think that's beautiful because I want to, I want to, I want to combine with you, Rachel, because my wife and I did something similar. It was Grow Old with Me by John. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, great. Yeah. Another great song. So it's definitely in the ballad uh, range of things uh, now and then. we cer I mean, certainly it's a ballad. It's the kind yeah. of thing that would have fit uh, nicely on the White Album. It comes to mind because of the simple production in the uh, prior to these guys getting hold of it and everything. Uh, you know, it's a John song all the way. And uh, it's a great ballad here, you know. Yep, yeah, Absolutely. 
So a little more waiting to go, Larry. Did uh, did you order the forty five or did you go right? Uh, yeah, the, I, I have no interest in the forty five. Just the uh, CDs. Yeah, and of course, uh, I think again they're they're missing uh, the opportunity to provide for physical media. Of course, I love physical media. They are not providing the Atmos track on the physical media, so right, right. it's only available through streaming, which is you know. Yeah. Not optimal yeah. for me. Not no, optimal. So, so the song premieres tomorrow at 10 in the morning, Eastern Standard Time on the Beatles YouTube channel. And oh, then I think perfect, the video perfect. is the, the next day. day or yeah. Yeah. Oh, good, good. So I'll be, I'll be there tomorrow at 10. Oh, I'm so excited. I know it doesn't look and I should be jumping around and doing crazy <laughs> things, but I, I, I'm just so like... It's like an intense three days ahead yeah, of us. But yeah. Today and the next couple, I'm just really, I, 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 I don't know what to say. And I, I don't want to take up time with it, but it's just like, you know, since being a little kid when I was three and then my dad who's sitting right above me right now, 93 years old, and the man who bought me my first two Beatle albums along with my mom in 64. And then here I am all these years later. And my thankfully he's still with me and I can share this with him. And it's just like, Again, folks, I don't want to be maudlin here or melancholy, but I, I think you both feel the same. It's just a yeah. very oh, emotional time. Mel uh, melancholy is part of the Beatles sound. you got to have a, if, uh, Eleanor Rigby. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Give me a cello, you know, or a tear to my eyes. So, yeah, the Beatles have melancholy. They're part of from that part of the world. Most of them are of Irish ancestry. Anyway, Lennon, Harris, and McCartney are all Irish yeah. uh, names, uh, surnames. So I think that's uh, totally legit. Just emotional, you know, emotional, how it touchstones during your life and how the Beatles have fit into all that, you know. It's we cool. need Back to Never the ends. Egg box set instead of the Red and Blue remasters. I'll take both. <laughs> yeah. You want Back to the Egg, though. Yeah, of course. And London, and London Town. I want yeah. London Town. Too. I like London Town. I actually London prefer, Town's one of my favorites. I prefer it over Back to the Egg for my yeah. musical taste, what kind of where I'm at uh, musically. They'd, they'd be a nice pairing like they did Wildlife and Red Rose Speedway. I want those two, like, yeah. soon. Uh yeah, John Lennon's uh, Mind Games, this is my favorite Lennon solo album, is Mind Games, 1973, fantastic. Yeah, I think that's very cool, because that's like a cool little pop John Lennon album. and Yeah, I love that. that's how I like great. it, I think, and there's so yeah. many great little songs on that thing. Yeah. Are you a fan of his darker stuff, Rachel, like Plastic Ono Band, more, oh, you know? Huge, huge, yeah. huge. Absolutely. I mean, if you ask me what's his greatest album, Plastic Ono Band. Yeah. Okay. But but what's his, but the one I go to, it's like the Beatles. What's the best Beatles movie? Hard Day's Night. It's an artistic achievement. It's a Criterion Collection has it uh, as part of their collection for Love of God. But right. what's my favorite Beatle movie? Help. It's silly. It's fun. This one's in Kula. And yep. so, uh, you know, because we've got all the fun, the color, the nonsense, the, you know, exactly. the craziness. Yeah. Hey, yep. I love it. I just love. So Help's my favorite Beatle uh, movie. But Hard Day's Night is the better film, you know. And, and, I, I, thing, you know? and I am even a fan of Yoko Ono's music. Not all of it, but a yeah. good chunk of it. Yeah, I'm with you, Larry. I like some yeah. of it and some of it I... Could take yeah. or leave. You know? I'm like a 10 percent to a 90 or 80, whatever, 10 to 90. <laughs> 90 like, 10. You're a 90 10. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, and I understand, like, I get, I understand fluxes and art and in modern art and all this sort of thing. But you know, for my listening pleasure, no, I'm not. I no, don't scream. But, but the thing yeah. is, have have these people actually listened to like approximately Infinite Universe? It's a double album of hers, and it's all song based. She's not yeah. screaming, You're right? She's not crazy. screeching and all that. It's a very song based album. Yeah, yeah. that's one one of Yoko's albums I do have. Yeah, she yeah. was, uh, from what I understand, I mean, she was uh, classically trained at Sarah Lawrence. Uh, that I think mm. she took uh, some courses at Sarah Lawrence with uh, music courses. So, and Rachel, I mean. Larry, I hate to do this to you, but I, I had an hour time limit only yep. because Dad I'm, I'm to get supper. Yeah, and I am the chef. My wife and I do the cooking here, so yeah, I got to go feed Dad. But Larry, 
Love you, man. Thank, Thank you so you. much. I'm honored that you thought of me and invited me today. And Rachel, always a pleasure to see you. Uh, yeah, you have a, an outstanding channel, and I, I really appreciate being here with two legends. So okay. thank you so well, much. Thank you. Take, Take care, care. Matt. Thank Take you. care. Bye, yeah, guys. Bye. Yeah, Matt's channel has taken off. Have you seen what, what he's yeah. doing lately? Oh, yeah. he's, just, yep. he's on yep. the way. I call it escape velocity after a while you get to a certain point with your channel, and it just grows and grows. There's no yeah. slowing you down, you know? Yeah. Venus and Mars, yep, underrated. This is a good follow-up. Do you think it's underrated? I think it's fantastic. Yeah. I think the Venus and Mars is 1975. Great album. I got a Canadian first press, and I've got the, a reissue from uh, on it from around 2016 or so. It's fantastic. Walls and Bridges has become my RAM. The mm. one I over... Oh, Walls and Bridges is, is excellent. Yeah. yeah, a number of people cite that as their favorite Lennon solo. Um, it's never been my, my favorite... Uh, but you know, and of course, it, you know, he is number one, the only one he got number one in his lifetime, yeah. whatever gets you through the night. And I think in large pressure because of Elton John, there, yeah, 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 all four Beatles on the Be Ringo's solo album, yeah, the Ringo album. And I'm the greatest John Lennon, always saying that uh, Ringo yeah. could get away with singing it. There's no yeah. way I'm going, they'd murder me if I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, simply the best music of my life. Yeah. So, did did you see the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan Show? Or yeah, nineteen sixty four. That's one of my first memories. <laughs> I saw it, but here's the story. I saw it, but I don't remember it. Yeah, because it was it didn't mean anything to me. I'm oh, yeah. I'm uh, what am I? I'm like five years old. I'm I'm two weeks away from turning six years old in 1964. Yeah, yeah uh, February 9th. I turned uh, February 22nd for me. So, but my grandfather, who's from Liverpool, was in the house with us watching it, and so my grandfather's visiting. And the family story is my grandfather because we watched that Sullivan every because Topo Chicho. I would have been more excited. Yeah, I, re oh, yeah, I used to love that. Because yeah. I'm, I'm five, for the love yeah. of God. I love the little mouse. So yeah. I yeah. want the little mouse to kiss Eddie goodnight. Eddie, yeah. give me kiss goodnight. All right, dear Chupu. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, so we'd have that. So the Beatles came out. It wasn't a big deal. But my grandfather did not like them. He's an old guy. He's like in his seventies. Yeah. Oh, so, oh, so bloody old. And, and it's funny they they would talk back then about the long hair, right? And they didn't have long hair. It was the long hair, and he says, "I can't understand them." Yeah. <laughs> I go, "You're from Liverpool. You can't." You know, this is what I'm thinking. But this is the story, apparently, as I'm told. So I did watch it, but I have no memory of it. Yeah. Just too young. I wasn't. I was more into Snoopy. I tell people I like Snoopy and the Red Baron, 1968, The Royal Guardsman. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Christmas, my friend. Yeah. You know, it's all that little, you know, Snoopy, you know, 10, 20, 40, 30. Yeah. And, but I like the Beatles, but, you know, if I had a choice, were you into the monkeys? Snoopy, I love the monkeys, yeah, yeah. especially the super monkey, because I love comic books, Larry. So yeah. when I saw the preview, it was like the monkeys coming this Friday or whatever night it was debuting. And they ran the premiere and the previews all week long. And then I saw them taking off the balcony. That was the episode I wanted. I want to see them in their super monkey suits flying off. Yeah, right? yeah. Now that time it's 66. So I'm eight years old by the time that shows up. Yeah. Yeah. Me TV. There you go. Yeah. Me TV. Yeah. And uh, Bob, I'm a musician. And the first song I ever found haunting was, and I love her totally blew yeah. me away as an eight year old. Yeah. Beautiful Paul song. So good to see you, Larry. Love ya, bro. Thank you, Scott. Well, I think that's about it because I need to have some dinner. But it's Food been an important. exciting day. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a it's another history day in the in the Beatles uh, story, right? Yeah. And we're still here to tell the tale. So thank God for that, Larry. Yeah, yeah. Um, Larry, I remain a fan. You're fantastic. Thanks for allowing me to come up with you and spend welcome. some time uh, on yeah, this thing. And the monkeys you. were awesome. Yeah. You know, some people do put the monkeys down, but no matter what, they were talented, right? Like, 
they get the funniest look from everyone they meet. They do. <laughs> yeah, because that's hilarious. You said if people put them down. Yeah. You know, when people try to put us down. Yeah. We get the funniest looks from everyone we meet. Yeah. So it's, it's right in the lyric. You did a monkey's yeah. lyric. And the Beatles got, like, like I got the most monkeys. of the monkeys up there. I got head, headquarters, yeah. Pisces, Aquarius. I got uh, monkeys, more monkeys. Yeah. I love the and green. And they're monkeys. not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, man, what's so okay? You got to go eat, but I'm telling you, I'm not a big fan of the Rock and Roll. Rock, oh, neither rock am I. No. Hall of Fame. no. And I'm not a fan of Rolling Stone magazine anymore, but I used to be when I was young. I loved oh, Rolling yeah, Stone. Yeah. Yeah. But nowadays they did their top 250 guitarists, and I'm like, what? Yeah. So this is yeah. where we find ourselves in 2023. Thank God for the Beatles yeah. in whatever way we can get them. Yeah. Okay. So uh, thank you, Rachel. And be, be sure to subscribe to Rachel. I'll, I'll have a link for Matthew Street and Rachel's channel. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Larry. Yeah. So see you soon. Or see you soon. Yeah, drop by, drop by the show. Okay, I will. Yep. Bye. All right, everybody. Bye, Larry. I'll head out too. Bye.